Hello everyone. I'm Dharani Vijay Kumar, Principal Product Manager at Stagen. Very happy to be here at PlatformCon. And today I'm going to speak about shared responsibility model in cloud platforms. This is an emerging pain point across organizations as they deal with multi-cloud environments. There is always developer autonomy versus governance at scale. Those are conflicting priorities for them. And a little bit about myself. I'm currently a product leader at Stagen for experience across the platform. And previously, I was a product manager at Ashikar and AWS. At AWS, I led the launch of many innovations within Lambda, such as IPv6 and VPC improvements. At, at Ashikar, I led the unified log streaming across Ashikar products. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy being at the intersection of platform and product teams when it comes to launching and innovating. What we'll cover today? We'll talk about the personas in the multi-cloud environment and their growing needs. We'll also spend some time on autonomy and governance in multi-cloud deployments, how they don't have to be like versus, but they can be complementary to each other. And then thirdly, I'll speak about some of the shared responsibility workflows as it relates to managing cloud infrastructure and, and managed services. And then we'll speak about how to bake in compliance for customers and deployments who have who are in regulated industries. And last but not the least, I'll share some real world examples and learning from of our own customers here at Stagen. Let's dive into the personas and their needs. Let's begin with Sam, who's the product manager. Yeah, Sam defines the requirements for their company's web application. They're responsible for writing detailed requirements and actually aligning the user journeys with what is possible with their teams. Sam these days also prototypes his ideas with copilots, AI copilots that are available to basically understand feasibility and get executive buy-in. They're expected to launch needle moving capabilities on time to their global customer. And here you have Pete, who's the application developer, and Pete builds and maintains features for the company's main web app. They're responsible for writing and testing their code and following procedures to deploy it. They're expected not only to rapidly prototype, but also stick to compliances that are actually pushed onto them by their platform teams and segments. And next, let's talk about Sarah, who is responsible for keeping the company's infrastructure running, not only running, but responsive and secure and within budget. Hey, we have all been platform engineers. There are so many more other responsibilities as well, right? So you must ensure that application developers not only have access to their infrastructure to deploy apps, but, but also they set security and guardrails for these applications. When I say guardrails, not merely from security, but also from cost overruns. And now that we have introduced the personas, let's talk about the shared, shared responsibility between the product and the platform teams. Traditionally, the product team ships new features. Sam and Pete on the left here are always worried about like shipping more and more. Whereas traditionally, Sarah on the platform team is always considered the gatekeeper. But in the new world, we believe things have to change. On the left, on the product side, both Sam and Pete have to be market which regions they serve as well as what's the cost of the cloud footprint, right? They need to be really aware of those things as well. It's not merely Sarah's job. On the right-hand side, right, Sarah has to be a velocity enabler. Her job is not only to be a gatekeeper, but also she needs to be aware of the developer velocity and productivity that's required for an organization to succeed. She has multi-cloud environments typically. It's not single cloud. It's not only AWS, it's, it's not only GCP, it's not only like Kubernetes in your own clusters. There is also like open AI, there is also cloud models, and there are many, many more cloud and managed cloud services that, that Sara has to work or, or enable for her developers. She needs to use automation wherever possible, wherever possible. That's just not enough. She also needs to have increased collaboration and leverage her product teams for wherever more information is required. That's the key insight we want to like double click here. 
and that's the collaboration is where the velocity enablement happens. Let's take a typical scenario where a developer simply wants an S3 bucket for their infrastructure, from their, for their infrastructure to be used within their application. And of course, the S3 bucket that they need needs to be encrypted for their feature. There are three paths that they can take. The whole company can take, indeed. Path one, a ticketing-based mechanism, which is the leftmost column. Path two is click ops. And path three is developer self-service. Let's start with path one. It's the ticketing-based uh, system, and we, we call it the, the death march fondly, right? What happens really here? A developer creates a Jira ticket, and then um, platform team, Sarah in this case, reviews the ticket. It would take like one to two to three days, right? Depending on her backlog. And then, of course, Sarah would have clarifying questions. And then to, to clarify that, they need to get on a call or, or Slack or whatever it takes and collaborate to, to get those resolved. And then it gets added to their uh, Sarah's next sprint. And then they would build a hardened module and, and, and provide that hardened uh, module, typically a Terraform in, in multi-cloud environments, uh, to the developer team. And then Sarah updates a ticket with a bucket name and the IAM role ARN in the, in the case of AWS, right? So the developer can start testing and, and integrating their application to the um, cloud infrastructure. This process can take all the way to three to four weeks. And what's a success rate like? Um, you could call it like close to 60 percentage due to like a lot of best communications that can happen. And then the developer satisfaction in this case, speed uh, is going to be like not so highly satisfied. Let's say you are a um, product team who is super down, down frustrated with the path one and the slowness and you take the cowboy route or click ops. Uh, you empower your teams to log into AWS console and directly create the S3 buckets and 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 do the the integration testing and ship to production, right? Awesome, yeah. You have something that works for your end customers and users um, in whatever markets you're you're serving. And then a security scanning happens, typically from a central security team um, who finds unencrypted buckets, and and then there is a panic email flying around, like talking about like who created this and. And, and emergency meetings typically are set up by the platform team because they own the buck here. And then they actually retrofit compliance policies. And now comes the developer back again who's, 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 who's frustrated that their app is broken. And the leadership team, the CTO, um, calls out to the team rightfully, why don't we have governance baked in, right? And that's where the whole ClickOps solution actually uh, breaks apart. But let's see if there is a way or path forward, um, not compromising um, velocity for governance, right? And that's what we call as path three, the developer self-service. Um, pretty much a go uh, Goldilocks zone, right? Like it's a golden path, yeah. Um, what happens really here? Developers typically open a platform, yeah. They search for S3 bucket in the service catalog. There are a bunch of pre-approved S3 templates with smart defaults, a platform like Stackjump provides that. They fill their project name, environment data, and, and, and all the other um, uh, classification that's required for this resource. And then Stackjump automatically generates Terraform with governance baked in, um, uh, based on the um, markets that they serve and, and based on the requirements filled in by the developer teams. And then um, um, the developer reviews the generated IAC code and then deploys the infrastructure. And then uh, what happens? Um, the compliance is built in and um, um, the, 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 the developer gets the um, in infrastructure details for them to use it within their production application. And last but not the least, all the system of record updates that need to happen for CMDB or cost center attribution or, or even compliances happens automatically, right? That's something we call it as path three, where platform engineers like Sarah don't have to actually spend a lot of time um, breaking their heads in enabling their, their developer teams. The total time to serve the developer should, should be like a few minutes, and the success rate is expected to be high, and the developer satisfaction is about um, very high and, and compliance too. Yeah, that's the recommended path for, for the teams. 
to summarize this, um, we have this um, 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 four quadrants here. We want the teams, the teams in your organization, typically it's multiple teams. No, I simplified it with a simple example, but typically multiple teams to be on path three, which is the top right. To summarize, um, these are all the metrics that you need to care about as a platform leader or a platform uh, lead or an engineer um, through automation and collaboration to the cloud environments. And that starts all the way from day zero, wherein the developers actually write their code to all, or alternatively like using Visual Studio to, to drag and drop infrastructure. So more day one tasks like, hey, discovering other cloud resources that have been used to security and compliance and all the way to write wherein they deploy the infrastructure and, and the workflow and insights um, through AI or MCP servers are, are more common now. Right? I'll share a few workflows where the product team and platform team work together. Here, uh, we have a self-service infrastructure visually represented. Um, you see a RAG application being built using Lambda, um, Bedrock, having um, open search and Cohere models. And then um, you have the, the product team who wants to deploy this app to production. Yeah. So the value for, for the product team here is to understand the infrastructure architecture, whereas on the other hand, SARA from the platform team um, ensures that the resources that are being used for this app follows um, the organization's standard. And now I'll show another workflow around cloud asset discovery, discovering um, resources deployed for, for each of the application. Here, um, the application developer feed actually uses this dashboard to find resources that um, are currently used for an application. And on the other hand, Sarah uses this dashboard to actually plan for cost optimization opportunities if, if, if they could actually change one of their compute, better uh, price to performance uh, ratio and whatnot, right? So, so that's the opportunity or, or the use case served with this cloud asset discovery. And next here, we have a drip protection um, um, dashboard, wherein um, Pete can actually suggest um, changes to infrastructure. Yeah, the Terraform code diff between what's deployed and, and what's actually uh, managed within the um, self-service portal is clearly shown here. And it doesn't just have to be like Sarah as the gatekeeper proposing changes. Pete can do that too. Right, that's the power of having a visual and collaborative uh, tool. Um, in this case, Tarjan being the example, yeah, and and Sarah on her side like could actually accept the changes um, um, with keeping compliance in in mind. Um, application teams who ship products in different markets are very well aware that like, hey, you need to follow compliance such as MRC, NIST, FedRAMP, and whatnot, right? Like to serve users in in other regions. So so. Um, the developer here prioritizes the, the violations based on their business requirements, whereas uh, Sarah enforces systematic remediation with the central uh, um, compliance dashboard around the infrastructure. So I'll share some real world learnings through StackGen as well as we put these workflows um, to our customers. At the top there is a, a Fortune 500 design software company who actually expanded to 25,000 um, um, global cloud res uh, resources, right? 25,000 uh, cloud resources. But they wanted to expand the applications to multiple regions, right? So they didn't really know what, what's actually deployed. Yeah. And they also wanted to standardize uh, to Terraform. So we enabled them um, and, and, and learned the power of automation, wherein um, they, could, they could actually scan the existing cloud resources from um, using StackGen. And the, the value here is the product teams were able to um, um, understand their own resources. On the platform side, um, the teams were able to generate IAC. And next there, um, you, uh, we have a healthcare customer who actually was awarded the best in KLS award, um, who wanted compliance across regulatory frameworks. So they used um, StackGen. Um, um, StackGen's compliance validation and checks 
between both product and platform teams. The pr product teams actually prioritize the market served. Um, hey, I, we want Marzi first and then Pentagram can come later and so on. Whereas the platform team actually uh, went ahead and did, did the remediation within IAC, in this case, Terraform. And last but not the least, we had a large um, mobile advertising company serving uh, users in 200 plus uh, regions. Um, they wanted to standardize self-service across their developers. We provided them workflows um, across Drift and workflow analytics using both traditional web UI and MCP server for AI co-pilots. And, and, and basically the value to them is um, developers can self-service not um, their, both their um, infra needs and, and Drift reviews. And on the platform side, um, the, the team actually is able to maintain and, and upgrade the hardened modules with private catalogs. So that, and last call out um, as I wrap this session, don't settle for your status quo velocity and, and take an integrated approach as a platform team or platform leader to enable more of your developers. We believe in three, three important principles at Statue. Um, autonomy with governance. Yeah, that's number one. Um, that actually helps meet developers where they are. Secondly, start small and grow the platform influence over time and, and um, um, leverage strong visual and AI interface to, to, to sort of like improve the collaboration model. And last but not the least, as you grow, uh, remember to operate at scale and use um, dependable automation at every step of the way with both rules-based and, and controlled AI as well. Yep. So thank you so much for listening to my talk here. And please feel free to email me at the or reach out to me at uh, my LinkedIn here. Thank you.